Got a real good case study here. This is a 2006 Cadillac DTS with a 4.6 liter engine. Symptoms are the vehicle will not go over 20 miles per hour when the check engine light comes on. And what we found is it is entering limp mode. We can't accelerate. And this is a drive-by wire system. Let's get a shot of the trouble codes next. Here's the code that's in memory. It's a PO651, which is five volt reference two circuit. And I think it's interesting just going into this that we see reference two that maybe there is possibly two separate five volt reference circuits on this car. Shot of the scan data. I did a data configure here where we're just looking at two data pids and we can actually see that there are two different reference circuit data pids and you see that I do in fact have a reference circuit 2 that is showing me near zero volts. So it looks like we have two separate 5 volt regulators in this car. Let's pull up a wiring diagram now and see what's all on both of these circuits. Here's the diagram for our caddy. This is a five page diagram. I have it all pieced together. Starting on the left side here, we're looking at a portion of the engine computer when we see dotted lines on Mitchell diagrams, that's a partial view. And what we see right away is there are two separate reference circuits. There's 5 volt reference 1 and then 5 volt reference 2. And what I've done is the green circuit on this diagram is reference 2 and the pink circuit is reference 1. So looking at this what we're trying to determine is what sensors are using this reference, which ones are using REF1, which ones are using REF2. And we see the APP sensor, that's accelerator pedal position, is actually using one of each. So there's two different sensors in there using two different reference circuits. Our fuel tank pressure sensor is on reference one. Coming over further, we see another portion of the engine computer, the dotted line. So these aren't like six different reference circuits we're looking at. So back to page one, you see there's two reference ones, one reference two. Those are tied together internally, the reference ones. And what we know now is this does have a separate reference two circuit, otherwise this car would not be running. So again, designations here, reference one being pink. And we'll come, come up this way and we come to our AC pressure sensor that's on reference one. Our secondary air injection check valve is on reference two. And what this is, I know it's drawn as a potentiometer, but what this actually is is a pressure sensor. It's a flow sensor for the air pump system, newer design. And that's a green circuit, so that's reference two. Another reference one is our map sensor. And another reference one is our EGR valve. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of difficulty reading through this small screen. So the EGR valve position sensor is using our REF1 circuit. And a couple more REF 2s, our cam and our crank are showing those as being on REF 2. You follow those two lines and on the computer it says, or it says REF 2, another dotted line of the computer, partial view. And then one more is my throttle body assembly. So this would be the TPS. This is our drive-by-wire throttle body. The TPS is using REF Two, and that would be shared internally. So both of these potentiometers are sharing a reference, sharing a ground, pretty standard on GMs for that. So REF2 is shorted to ground. We're confident of that. We're not worried about an open causing zero volts on the reference circuit, on scan data that is. Scan data reference at zero, it's shorted to ground or you have a computer problem. So we're, our focus is on a short to ground and our focus will be on our TPS. It will be on our cam and cranks. It will be on our air pump pressure sensor. They're calling it a check valve, but I'm telling you that's a pressure sensor. And then half of the APP sensor. So we need to unplug all these sensors 
and locate which sensors shorted to ground or where our wiring fault is with the sensors unplugged. That is the direction that we're going. And uh, one final comment here would be the cam and crank. And I, I am going to mention this later in the video. The cam and crank signals, I believe this is a misprint. And the reason I'm saying that is if the crank is on reference two, which I'm pretty confident it is because we're getting crank sensor codes too. If the crank is on reference two and the cam is on reference two, this car would not be running. We would have no input signal to the computer. Now we could lose our crank and still maintain our cam and, and potentially still have the car run. So there is the potential here uh, that this cam is actually reference one and there's a misprint here. Um, I cannot guarantee that, but the car is running with a shorted reference to circuit and the crank is definitely on that circuit. Let's go back to the car. All right, my connections for the scope, we are connected to reference one and reference two together. For our reference one circuit, we're connected to our map sensor right here. And for our reference two circuit, we're connected to the TPS over here. We ran our wires inside the car and took it for a test drive to get this condition to happen. We have a reference two circuit short to ground. There is definitely two separate five volt reference circuits in this car. So what I'm going to show you guys is how to isolate this short to ground on this reference two circuit. This will be very similar to our other five volt reference shorted circuit videos we've done. The difference with this one is this car still runs. It just doesn't run very well. In fact, can you reach inside and start this up for me real quick so we can hear it on camera? So we have a very bad misfire. The car, the car does still run though is the point. Okay, go ahead, shut it off. So unlike our other five volt reference circuit videos where we had a short to ground and the car was a complete no start, because this car has two separate regulators, it can still run. We're still dealing with the same thing. It's either a shorted sensor or it's a short in the harness. Back on the scan tool, looking at reference two, voltage down near zero, reference one at five, and then this screen, what I'm showing is the scope at the same time where we're connected to the TPS and the map. And you see my reference one circuit at 4.97, that's the yellow trace, and my reference two is at 0.15. So really showing you exactly what the scan tool is showing. Reference two on scan data is near zero, reference two live connected, is near zero, reference one looks good. So definitely a short to ground in this reference circuit. Is it a sensor? Is it a wiring problem? Coming up next. Okay, I'm back under the hood now. And I moved everything out here. I have the scan tool and scope display still here. My yellow lead is connected to my map sensor as before. My green channel, channel two, is connected to my TPS and what I'm going to do from this point is we're not going to focus on the scan tool, we'll focus on the scope and I'm going to maximize this so we can look at that screen only and what that will allow me to do is to give you a zoomed out view of this green channel right here while I manipulate the harness up here. So let me back the camera up a little bit and we'll try to get both of these in the screen at the same time. And what we started with was looking at what all was on this reference two circuit, right? And just to review, our cam, our crank, our TPS one and two, our secondary air check valve, and our APP, that's accelerator pedal position. We're not sure if that was one or two, but that's what's all on this reference two circuit. And really what we need to do is one at a time start unplugging these sensors and where we started because it was easy to get to is this secondary air check valve and that's this piece right here and what this is is basically a pressure sensor this is a newer design and what we did first is we we unplugged this and when we unplugged this initially this line right here jumped up to five and we really started focusing on this uh, it ended up not being that and I start pushing on the harness in this area and 
you see the change right here. So I'm pushing on the harness. I'm really just eyeballing where this harness is, is laying against anything metal. And moving over this direction is really where we found it. Let me show you back in here. Right in there. So I'm moving that harness. And we actually kind of got lucky because we didn't have to unplug all the sensors on this circuit. Right away we found our problem. And let me get you a zoomed in view now of where this harness is laying on ground. And these kind of shots are tough to get on camera here, guys. You're going to have to bear with me. One of the things that I've always said is we never want to start moving a harness until we do all of our visual contact points. And by contact points, I'm saying, you know, you're looking at the harness and, you know, there's some contact on the fuel rail here. And we look over further and we see some contact on the fuel rail here. And then we start looking down this way and we see this main harness has a real good contact on this. Maybe look from this angle might show us a little bit better. Got a little bit of shadow here. Looking right here where this metal bracket right here is actually cutting into the harness right here. And this is the kind of contact that I'm talking about. That is where our problem is. So what I'm doing when I show that reference circuit is I'm taking, when I show the reference circuit coming in and out, I'm taking this harness and I'm pulling it away right here, pushing and pulling away right here. And that is exactly where this line is increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to do this again while I show you the scope. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll open this harness up and I'll show you where this wire is definitely cut into this bracket. By the way, this engine has bad engine mounts. So there's a lot of movement and torque with this thing and I believe that's part of the cause. Okay, back on the scope. And what we want to do is I'll push the harness in toward that bracket. It's staying at five right now, right on the corner where it's, where it's kind of wedged in there. If you can push on it where it, there you go, and pull away and push on it and pull away. That is exactly where our short is. As you can see, I'm going to open that harness up now. Okay, this is a shot of our harness. I had to pull the conduit off. It was torn on the bottom and it was difficult to do to get this wire up out of there because it was actually on the bottom. And it is this brown white wire, which is indeed our V-Ref 2 circuit. And uh, I have to remember this shows up a lot better on the regular screen than my two inch camera screen. You can see where the wire was cut, where it was laying across that bracket and that's it that was that's what was causing our short to ground on this reference circuit pulling it all to ground and so that would be my throttle position sensor circuit my cam my crank the secondary air check valve which is that airflow sensor for the air pump system and then my accelerator pedal position at least half of it and uh, it's actually amazing the car even ran, considering the cam and crank are both on this circuit. I mean, unless it's, you know, I'm really not sure how the car was running, truthfully. Uh, I'll have to double check that wiring diagram again and see if there's another input here. But that's definitely our short to ground. Our five volt on reference two is actually showing five volts now. And that is live on our scope. So we found our short to ground on this five volt reference circuit. I think lesson learned for this car. A couple things, one, on some systems they actually do use two separate five volt regulated circuits. And two, is when you're looking for shorts to ground in a harness, do a visual on your contact points first. If you would, if you would have started tugging on this harness, what can happen is you move the harness away from where it originally sat and you will miss your window of opportunity to find it. So that was the key in locating this, was doing a visual of our contact points first and we were able to find it very quickly. So shorted reference circuit, 
pulling half of those sensors down to ground, causing a major drivability problem, causing limp mode. Very simple 50 cent fix.